Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sonia. I'm currently in the second year of my PhD program studying mathematics um, in Canada. And I wanted to make a video about funding for graduate programs since maybe not a lot of people know how it works and stuff. And I'm also going to show you my monthly budget, so how much I get per month and how I can allocate it towards fees, cost of living, and maybe some other stuff. So if you don't know, a lot of universities in Canada, mine including, will fund graduate students enough to cover their fees, like their tuition and, and other fees, as well as to cover their living expenses. So basically, like you don't pay out of your own pocket for the degree. Like essentially it's like a free ride through grad school, which is great. Uh, I know not all universities do that for masters, but there are a lot that do it for masters as well. For ex for mine, I got fully funded for my masters, which was great too. I don't know how it is for all schools, but for my school, you get funding from two sources. So the first one is like your research fellowship, which is basically just a grant for you to do research with your advisors. Uh, e even if you're just in your first year and not really doing any research, you still get this. The second source is from actually working, which is like your teaching assistant job where they pay you an hourly rate and they give you like a certain amount of hours. So for that one, I think we make around $39 an hour, <laughs> which is pretty good. And we work like 234 hours per year. Usually the teaching assistantship is from September to May and then during the summer since there aren't many undergraduate students you do get like a little bit less monthly income. And it may seem scary like how do you apply for grants and everything but at, at least at my school there's just like one form you fill out and then like you're guaranteed a grant. Uh, so that's very good. Uh, so in total, as a PhD student in Canada, I get around $26,000 Canadian a year. Compared to people with full-time jobs in the industry, it's very little, but it's a livable wage at least. And even as a master's student, I got like $24,000, which is not bad. Um, yeah, so let's Let's jump into the budgeting and I'll show you how I can make this work for myself. And if you guys have any questions about funding or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. So I will write income in black and then expenses in red. So this is per month. So I get a scholarship and that is $7.50 per month. Then I get my TA payments which is 1382 per month. So if you look at the total of that, it's 2132 a month, which is like not that bad. So first I need to take out my fixed expenses. So that's things that won't vary. So first I'll take out rent, which is 900 per month. And I live in a one bedroom apartment, which is pretty expensive, I think, and because of that, I'll be, I'll be moving to a shared house in the spring, and that'll save me like $300 a month, which will be amazing. And then I have tuition. So this kind of varies per month. I don't know why, but it's more or less like $650 per month, something like that. Uh, my cell phone bill, which I'm very cheap, and this is just $28 a month. Okay, and now we can put utilities. And I'm not really sure what to put here because it ranges from like $30 to over 100 just depending on if it's winter or summer. So I'll just put like 60. It's like in the middle. So these are like my bills I have to pay. And they're all need. So now let's see how much I have left. So I have $494 left for basically everything else like gas groceries something if i want to buy something or whatever this these are the parts where like i have to budget i have to guess like how much i should spend on so i'll put gas as like 60 dollars because i don't drive around that much 
It's mostly if I visit vi- my family or go to the store or go, go to violin lessons, which I don't do now because of the lockdown. And then I'll put groceries as, I think a realistic thing is 250, like I think 250 to 300. Because 250 is like $8 a day for food, which seems like reasonable if you can, if you cook for yourself and all that. Okay, so now I have $124 left, which is not that much. So when I did take violin lessons, that would cost approximately $120 a month. So then that's it. I like to leave this for just like spending money, you know, if, if I ever feel like having takeout food or... I don't know, just if I want to buy some clothing or something like that, I can use it towards this. Or I guess, you know, buying cleaning products, soap, whatever, things that you don't buy like every week, that can all go in this budget. And I need to say that, so this is what I consistently get based on my scholarship and TA work, but I sporadically tutor, which is nice because then I can get some extra cash I I tutored someone for their final exams, like a whole lot in one week, and I made enough money to buy a used camera, which is great. (laughs) So things like that come along, which helps. I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you were having doubts about going to grad school because of financial issues, hopefully this gives you some sort of comfort and know that you don't have to pay for it from your own savings. Bye, see you next time.